after turning the lens in chapter 3 onto the Corinthians themselves and their horrendous capacity for self-deception, Paul now turns in chapter 4 to the ministry of apostleship. What does it really mean to be an apostle? And he talks about being worthy, being trustworthy of, uh, of the things that have been given to them as honourable stewards. And he says, therefore, I do not pronounce judgment before the time. But as for you, Corinthians, you want the comfortable life. Each one will receive his commendation from God. He's arguing in this first section of chapter 4 against being sidetracked. They want the comfortable high life of Corinthian culture, the very best that culture has to bring. The higher the life, the more successful they will be spiritually. But Paul is saying the exact opposite. Paul says, I've applied everything to myself and Apollos for your benefit, that you may learn by us not to go beyond, beyond what is written, as is the key here in verse, uh, verse 6, so that none of you may be puffed up. He wants to avoid, uh, help them to avoid the, the twin traps of, on the one hand, criticising uh, leaders just all the time. Just Leaders are merely human too, as we all know. Uh, so it's avoiding of criticism on the one hand, a cheap, lazy criticism, and, 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 a, and a simple blind allegiance to following your favourite person. They were doing that. I follow Paul, I follow Cephas, I follow Apollos. They were factionalists. They had proven themselves to be spiritually immature. Then Paul talks to them in verses 8 to 17 about what does it mean to be an apostle? These Corinthians were striving for the best of life, the high culture, high society. They wanted to be recognised. They wanted to self-promote themselves through the ranks to high society. But Paul says, no, this is what a, a, a apostolic ministry looks like. We are like men sentenced to death. We've become a spectacle to the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake. But look how he begins this passage. It's so brilliant in verse 8 of chapter 4. Notice the tone of what Paul is writing here. The sarcasm. It is absolutely biting sarcasm. Verse 8, he says, Already you have become all, uh, all you want. Already you have become rich. Without us, you have become kings, and would that you would reign so we could share your reign with you. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all. In other words, Paul is saying, you guys are at the top, or so you think, but look at actual apostles. We're at the bottom. We are hungry and thirsty. We're poorly dressed. We're buffeted and homeless. We're working manual labor day and night to provide the gospel free of charge for you. Working with our own hands, he says, when reviled, we bless, and when cursed, when slandered, we entreat. We've become like the scum of the world. He says, Christianity is not about the achievement or attainment of comfort. It is not about the achievement or attainment of respect. How can it be after covering in chapter one the essential gospel content uh, of, of a preacher's message. Christ crucified. We follow a crucified saviour, stripped naked, beaten, humiliated, exposed for hours. This is the Christ that we follow, Paul is saying. How can you want something different? He says the apostleship is completely in line with the gospel message. So then he concludes chapter four by saying, this is why some of you are arrogant, because you want what is not Christian. You want the best in life. You want power, authority, control, respect through self-promotion, not self-denial. You are not willing to become like the scum of all the earth. So Paul concludes this scathing response to the uh, divisions in, uh, that we read of in chapter 1 that caused the occasion for the letter. Paul will later, will now begin in chapter 5, his response to one of the most horrendous situations. Uh, we'll come to that tomorrow.